In this video, we're going to talk about how you can use the new Flick Twist to automate the boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs. My name is Jeff. Flick reached out about taking part in the release of the new Flick Twist today and to share my thoughts on the Flick products. And honestly, I have to say my initial thoughts about how useful these little buttons could be was way off. We'll talk about the twist in a bit, but first I wanna talk about how you can automate the boring stuff with Flick products. If you've been following my smart home journey for a while, you'll know that I have a very specific definition of a smart home, and it's all about automations. Not only that, the automations should not be tied to direct interaction. And while I do have a handful of voice commands, only one is tied to something important. The rest are for pure fun. It's also why you won't find dashboards and tablets in this smart home. I built my smart home around the idea that we can just go on about our lives and Home Assistant handles the lights, reminds us of important information at the moment it becomes pertinent, and for the most part, just runs the house. But while I've made every effort to ensure Home Assistant knows all the context it needs to make smart decisions, there are some of those edge cases that as of 2023, I simply don't have a way to make Home Assistant aware of. Like when I'm reading a book in bed, Home Assistant has no way of knowing that that's what I'm doing and will eventually, yeah. But I added a flick to my headboard and now I simply press a button to override the automation so the lights stay on longer than normal. My son even has one so that if he wants to modify his goodnight routine, which normally gets kicked off when we tell the echo in his bedroom goodnight, we can now press the button on his bed and just get the parts of the routine he's in the mood for. The truth is, these things are real simple in their design, so useful for handling the exceptions, and so easy to connect to Home Assistant that it's almost a perfect solution. And the best part is that some of their connections can happen locally and interact with the tech you already have, like Chromecast and LifeX light bulbs. I need to do a more detailed video on how I set these up, so let me know in the comments if you want some more details around that, although you will see some of that in just a bit. Because now that we have an idea of how I see these fitting in with the smart home, I want to talk the Flick Twist. The Flick Twist is a pretty big upgrade from the Flick 2. First, it's quite a bit bigger, but from a usability standpoint, that just helps with the Twist functionality. But it also means that you can use AAA batteries instead of the button batteries that are used in the smaller Flick buttons and it comes with a built-in magnet for mounting it. But you could also screw it into the wall if need be. And it now has the ability to control multiple devices because it drops the ability to do the long press, trading it for a twist action that feels pretty intuitive for certain tasks like volume and light control. And it can control pretty much anything in your smart home. First, I suggest getting the Flick Hub. I'm using the Mini, but we'll be grabbing one of those with the Ethernet port. You really don't need the Hub. These will work straight off your phone, but the Hub just makes things more stable and gives you more options. I'm a big fan of the Internet request action. Although if you use the Amazon Echo, the ability to trigger Amazon routines with these flick actions is pretty useful. And in my experience, works pretty well, although it is slower than the Internet request action when interacting with Home Assistant. Although for the twist, the twist actions are not available as the trigger for Amazon routines. The internet request means that we can have an action call a webhook in Home Assistant and from that do pretty much anything. There's also a Home Assistant add-on out there that's supposed to allow you to see these devices over your Bluetooth connection. But given that so much can be using that Bluetooth adapter, I would stick to using the internet request in webhooks unless you aren't using the Bluetooth adapter today. And there is the ability to use the SDK to connect to your Flick Hub and then leverage things like MQTT. I'll eventually get there, but for now, despite being enabled in my app, I can't get the SDK console to connect to my mini hub. In any case, once the twist is added to your hub, you can configure the actions. Most of these will work with my smart home today, although the volume appears to only work with Sonos speakers which I think is a bit of a miss, especially since there is a connection to local Chromecasts and VLC instances as built-in actions. 
Being able to control the VLC instance in Home Assistant using this would be awesome, but for now, I have to do that a different way. You can easily control Philips Hue and LifeX bulbs using the light options, but for most of what I'm doing, I think the advanced dimming and scene blender will work the best. Scene blender allows you to add four different triggers with the idea that as you turn the dial, each of the four spots executes a different scene. This would be perfect for cycling through a full bright, half bright, dim, and off. I'm still building this out, but I have a ton of ideas. But what I'm really excited about is the push and twist functionality. This option gives you access to the selector action, which can be used in basic mode, which gives you three options, or advanced, that gives you 11 options. And this is what has me the most excited. Because for example, I could press and twist this to the first section, then set up both the press and double press and twist actions to say my Disney music, which typically plays throughout the house only on weekends from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Just add some of that Disney park music magic that you hear as you walk around those parks to my house. But there are days that we might want to have it on. And now we can simply use the flick twist to manually kick that off. And we can do something similar for the other positions, giving us 11 different selections. Again, I'm still working on all the use cases I have for this, but I think this is gonna be a nice way to handle those exceptions in a simple, non-intrusive way. I suspect I'll do a follow-up video once I have this working perfectly in my smart home. But even with the excitement, it's important to point out there are a few flaws. There, of course, are no perfect solutions, and smart home is probably the biggest case in point. Every solution involves compromise on some level, and while your willingness to compromise on certain things is definitely different than mine, here are the things I think are the biggest issues with this Flick lineup. These buttons, while easy to use and easy to set up, are just not intuitive. Sure, you can put stickers on them to identify what they control, but walking up to this button you have no idea what the press does, let alone double press or even the long press. Which means if you live in a smart home with other people, it's going to be a new workflow for interacting with your home. And if you do it wrong, the other people are not gonna improve. Which is why I like these for augmenting what is normally fully automated by providing a way to manually do some exception handling. But it still means anyone who might interact with this button is going to need to know and remember how to use it when it comes time. And unfortunately, I think Home Assistant is more reliable in terms of remembering how to handle a situation than we humans are, which is why I prefer leaving the smart home stuff completely up to Home Assistant. The flick twist, while a fantastic piece of tech with a nice twist action and lots of configurability, means it only increases what the humans need to remember. Having some visual display that gives you feedback on what options you have, I think would make this perfect. And finally, these are Bluetooth. And while they have worked well in my house, the thing that irks me the most is despite my Flick Hub being connected to the network, I evidently can only connect to the Flick app via Bluetooth, which means I can't sit in my office and modify my Flick devices. I have to get up and walk to the other side of the basement so my phone will be in Bluetooth range. And <laughs> not a big deal, but why? In any case, if these are not enough to scare you away, then I think Flick may have a place in your smart home. The Flick Twist would be a great addition to a large room where you wanted a simple interface to all of your smart home tech in that space and could be easily put on an end table or mounted on a wall. The Flick 2s are also pretty good for hiding buttons around and would be perfect as a simple button to kick off an automation, especially if, say, you have older parents. These could be easily added to bathrooms and be used to call for help, or even as a panic button that kicks off an alarm. There's an affiliate link in the description of this video where you can grab one of the various Flick kits and, at the same time, support Slacker Labs. A big thanks to Flick for allowing me to be part of their Flick Twist release. Now it's time for me to go figure out what other boring stuff Flick can automate.